In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to turn any photograph into a Facebook 3D photo. Now, you've all seen them, you know, when you move the phone and you see the parallax and things move. I'm going to show you how to do that in Photoshop right now. Hey, Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, and today I'm going to show you. Facebook 3D photos inside of Photoshop. I'm going to take a regular photograph and I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily turn it into that cool 3D effect, you know, where you can move your mouse around or move your phone around and see it moving in parallax. Okay, so what we need to do right now is separate the photograph into different planes, meaning that we've got an object that's going to be more forward and a background or a midground that's going to be here and a background that's going to be all the way back here. Now, this is actually not that difficult, and we can also blend them together. So, let's get started right now. First photo we're going to use is me here paddle boarding for the very first time in Hawaii. We're going to wrap our quick selection tool and choose select subject. If you have an earlier version of Photoshop, you just need to drag across there. And all this does is it just gives us a little bit of a head start. So, I'm just going to go over here, make sure I grab my cap. And we can make the brush a little bit bigger. All right, now that we've got that selected, let's just create a new layer. And we just want to fill it with white. And a way to do that is to just hit the D key, reset the foreground background colors, Control or Command Delete. That will fill it with white. Control D to deselect. Excellent. And we'll just call this paddle. We're going to keep this one pretty simple. So I'm going to grab everything else as a mid-ground. So let's just grab our selection tool. Okay, so we want to select all of this as the mid-ground. We'll keep it simple for now. Quickest way to do that is to select the sky and inverse it. So quick selection tool. I'm going over there. Notice there's some areas there in the distance that haven't been picked up yet. You know what? I am going to get those in the next pass. I'll show you something really cool. So I'm just going to hit the Alt or the Option key. What I'm doing is just making sure I'm selecting all these buildings. But I'm ignoring the distant ones. And you'll see why in a sec. It'll actually be quite cool. So Command Shift I for invert. So we're selecting all of this. And once again, we're going to create a new layer. Command Delete, Control Backspace to fill it with white. Control D. And if you see little gaps in there, just grab a white brush and just paint in those little ziggly lines. We just want to kind of make sure. Not that it should matter too much. And we're going to call this one Mid. But if you notice on here, We've missed a few of those little buildings in the background. I'm going to select those individually, choose the background layer, grab our little tool here, and I'm just going to select on these buildings just to make sure we get them. And don't worry too much if you go over, because it won't matter. All right, great. So we've got all these buildings here. Let's create another layer, and we're going to call this one further. I'll just call it back. All right. Or command delete. That will fill it with white. Control D to deselect. And now I'm going to create one more layer. And this one here, I'm just going to fill with black. Okay. So hit the D key. We see we've got black as the foreground color. So that would be alt backspace or option delete on Mac. And that fills that background now with black. The reason we've done all that is we're actually creating what's known as a depth map. And this depth map actually comes from the 3D world uh, and more recently it's starting to come into photographs such as phones like the newer iPhone and the Android phone, you know, where it does that 3D map with the two lenses. It's actually creating a depth map. So what we're doing is we're creating one ourselves inside of Photoshop. So the depth map essentially just goes from white at the very front, black at the very back, and in different shades of gray in between will determine how far forward or how far back an object will be in 3D space. It's actually a lot simpler than what it sounds like. And now that we've cut out the different parts of the photo, we're going to set these up now as depth maps. So we're going to start off with the very background, which is black, which is all the way back. And the next thing we want to set is we want to do our midground. So I'm just going to drag the mid-ground down a little bit and we're going to turn it on 
and we can see what we've got there. Now, what we want to do, let me just go back to the photo, is we want to just kind of blend this. We want these buildings to stay pretty much on the same plane, but we want this to blend in space. So what we're going to do is go there, and I'm just going to control or command click to get this active. So we know that black is the extreme background. So we want to come forward. But here's a tip. Don't go all the way to white. Um, if you go all the way to white, it's going to give more depth inside the photograph, but it could be too much 3D depth. So um, as you experiment, you'll see how the different shades of gray affect it. So I want to start with a gray about, about here. I want this to be about as far forward as we go. And then we're going to go back. I'm selecting the background one now. And we're going to take it back to about there. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to grab the gradient tool. So make sure it's set to first option, foreground to background, linear, 100% opacity, and normal blend mode. Now here's the thing. If I create a gradient, wherever I start dragging and end dragging, that's where that gradient is going to appear. So we want the darker shade to go back towards the back and the lighter shade to go towards the front. But notice if I go here, we've got this blend, so that means this is going to blend up in 3D space. So what I want to do though, is I want to make sure where this background is about there. I don't want to drag any further than there. So I'm going to start here and drag up to there and stop. And the reason for that is I'm going to get a gradient in this area here, but this area is going to be flat. And that's going to put it on the same plane. You'll see what happens soon. So just hit Control D to turn that off. And let's turn on our background. So now we're starting to create our depth map. Now, if you want a hard edge, just keep it like that. If you want something to blend in, then you're going to feather that. Okay, so let's turn on our back and drag it underneath the mid. So we're going to have these buildings that are going to be going off into the distance, but not quite all the way back. So let's just select them here. So we've loaded that selection and we want to fill them with a dark gray, but not a black. So let's go to a very dark gray about there. Option delete. And now we've filled them with that shade and that's going to put them off into the distance a little bit more. Remember, as it gets lighter, it comes more forward. Finally, pedal border. Let's turn on the pedal border and we're just going to load the selection. So I just control click and now we want to sample the colors. Grab our eyedropper. Now what's really important is if you want this to be anchored to an area, you need it to start with exactly the same shade. So we're just going to click here as close as we can and we're setting that. So that's the shade we're going to start with. And now we want to go with another shade, which is going to be similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the background color. If you hold down the Alt or the Option key and click there, notice now that we've set the background color instead. So I'm going to tap on the black background and I'm going to make this just a little bit lighter, which means it's going to come forward a little bit. And this will work nicely for this effect. Okay, so let's grab the gradient. Make sure we select the right layer. And we can see that's what we've got there. So control D. This is looking good. What we want to do now is we want to save out our image. So let's hide all our depth map layers. We're going to choose our image here. And we're going to choose File, Export, Save for Web. And make sure it's no larger than 4000. And then we're just going to click on Save. And we're going to call this Paddle. And we're going to save it out as a JPEG. Hit save. Now, you can save these as PNGs or JPEGs. Um, the only thing is PNGs are 10 times the size of a JPEG, so I definitely want to use the smaller size. It makes it faster to upload to Facebook. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to save out our depth map. So let's just take, select everything. Actually, we're just going to choose File, Save As. All right, we see it right there. We want to make sure we're saving this as a JPEG. I'm going to select it just to give it the same name. And then I'm just going to add a underscore depth. And really, that's the key. All you need to do is name your depth map exactly the same name as your original file with underscore depth. And then Facebook is going to look at the two, load in the photo, grab the depth map, and apply that to the photo. Okay, let's go to my Facebook profile. And we're going to upload it. So let's click on the profile. Now, the first thing you want to do is change your privacy that says only me. 
Now, no one else will see it while you're testing it. Now we're going to upload a photo video, grab your picture and your picture with the depth map, click choose. Now Facebook is going to build a 3D photo and it'll just take a moment. Okay, so if we move around here, let's look at this. See there, there I am against the background. See, see how it changes there. Also see how that mid ground is moving. And also remember we set those buildings back there. See how they move independently, gives it more depth. So the more layers we do, the more depth we're going to get. All right, so I've got two questions for you right now. Uh, first one, social media. Do you do social media or not? And if so, what's your favorite platform? You know, platform being Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Let us know in the comments underneath. Second question, have you done any 3D work or do you do 3D work? I'm really curious about that. Let us know in a comment underneath. And so anyway, if you like these kind of videos, hit the subscribe button right now, become part of the cafe crew, and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. And ring that notification bell so you know when I upload, which is usually every Tuesday. So anyway, guys, if you like this video, share it with your friends and smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. <laughs>